wash this out really good and rinse it with DI water. And then I'd be ready to put whatever titrant I want in there. So let's say this is my unknown. So I could take a little bit of my unknown. If I give you like this much unknown, you're gonna to wanna to take just a little bit of it and pour it into maybe another container. Maybe if I can get another container, so I'd pour a little bit in. And then I could do a couple things with it. I could check it with pH paper and see if it is acidic or basic. Because you're either gonna have an acid or basin. I'm not telling you if it's gonna be strong or weak, people are gonna get different ones. So I could take a strip of pH paper and a clean stirring rod. touch it and it turns that is definitely acidic somewhere on the acidic chart throw that away you're gonna have to do three trials I'll do one trial in probably less than 10 minutes so you have an hour and a half to do three trials you should be able to do something in an hour and a half I can do in 10 minutes I could also take some phenol daily I'll have that available to you put a drop or two in there notice it stayed clear so I know that is an acid not a base Make sure all my equipment's clean to start with. So I'm gonna give you a sample. Every year I get at least one group, not group, I get at least one student then that dumps their entire sample in and titrates and they don't have any left over for any more trials. So be smart about it. So I'm gonna put in I could measure out, let's say, 10 milliliters of it if I want. So I'll take a graduated cylinder, get it as close to 10 as possible. I'll write down exactly what I get. Pour that in there. That's not hardly enough to see. So can I add DI water to it or not? Yes. Yes. Do I have to measure how much DI water I put in there or not? Who says yes? See, who says yes, who says no? Who says yes, I need to measure the amount of DI water I put in. Who says no, I don't have to measure it. Okay, everybody else is chicken to vote. So vote one more time or somebody give you a quiz right now. Who says yes, I have to. I'm gonna count the number of arms, so if we don't get, if I don't get 15, then I'm gonna do 14, I'm gonna give you a test. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, who says no, I don't have to measure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Nine and five is 14, or is 14 of you good? The no's have it. It doesn't matter. Right now I have X number of moles of hydronium ion in here because it's an acid. I still have the same number of hydronium moles in there. I did not change that. It does not matter. Good question. Didn't you just change the molarity? I did, but I didn't change the number of moles. I still know there was 10 milliliters of stuff. So when I get done at the end, if I find out there was three moles of acid in there and I started out with 10 milliliters, I can still figure out the molarity of the original acid. I don't need to take into account the water that was in there. Okay. So now that I know that it's an acid, I'm gonna wanna put a base in my burette, in my clean burette. So I find a strong base, like sodium hydroxide, I'll have that available for you and I'll pour it in there. I don't have to try to spend an hour getting it right at zero, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is is where it is. I'm just gonna leave this up here for now. I don't feel like having a mess. So, take my waste beaker now. Take some waste beaker, doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna run some liquid through there to get all the air bubbles out. Now I'm gonna write down the exact amount. So it's 29 and 30, it's between 29 and 30, it's below 29.5 six seven like 29.72 so 29.72 is my starting amount now i'm going to titrate the first titration you could do pretty fast because you're going to do three trials so if you screw one up that's okay 
but I'll start out by trying to go just a little bit. So actually one thing I forgot to do, but there was still some in there from before is make sure I have some indicator in there so I can tell when the color changes. So I'm real, real close already. So now I'm gonna try to get just a little bit. Get just a little bit in there. When I do a little bit, I'm just doing a 180 degree turn on this. That's really an overshoot, but it was only one turn. So that's what you're looking for, that color. So now I look at my thing. I'm at 29.99, looks like. So 29.99, so subtract those two numbers. So it looks like I got about 0.27 milliliters of three molar sodium hydroxide. I'll probably have one molar for you guys, but I had three molar sodium hydroxide, so three moles per liter, and I used 0.27 milliliters. So that'll tell me the liters will go away, milliliters will go away. That'll tell me the moles of NaOH I needed, which is also going to be the same as the moles of hydronium in there. So I multiply that out, that'll give me the moles. You can do it, I guess. And you guys can do it for me. Calculate up here. Three times 0.27 divided by 1,000. 8108. 0081? Yeah. Three zeros. So that's the moles of sodium hydroxide which is also the moles of hydrogen. And I divide, I started with 10 milliliters, which is 0 0.01 liters. So if I divide that out, move decimal over two places, right? So my unknown was 0 0.081 molar. Then I do it again. Dump everything in the waste beaker. Clean everything out. Add my unknown again, measure it out. Put some water in there. Put some indicator in there. One of your three trials, you're gonna use a pH probe. I only have a couple of work. That kind of sucks. Using the pH probe, what I have to do Get a squirt bottle to show you exactly what I have to do. So to use this pH probe, it's stored in a solution. So first of all, I need to take take it out of the solution, rinse it out, make sure it's on. Try to replace oh, this one. It's already on. I would probably want more liquid in there so I can actually submerge the tip of the probe. Once you take it out of its buffer solution, try to get it back into liquid pretty quick. So don't do it till you're ready to go. And you can take an initial pH. So I'm getting around 4.2. So I would log 4.2. Uh, make sure I know my starting amount here. I could take this out. Do a couple, couple point data points so I could read how much liquid I use. Now it's at 4.5. I could keep going a little bit. Past the equivalence point, you wouldn't want to do it like that. I'm just, I'm just doing it fast for demonstration. But you're going to want to get the pH at the equivalence point as well. Okay, and then you're done with that. So there's. One trial that actually the data was pretty good. One I went too fast on, but that's okay. And again, you got to get three of them in an hour and a half. I think we can do it. I'll give you some more guidance on it towards the end of class. I'll give you a few more notes and I'll give you some more guidance on it.